Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video, we talk about one of the top 10 problems in machine learning and data science, which is handling the class imbalance problem. Because of the significance of this topic, we will have five videos to discuss the main challenges and tools that you need to identify and solve these problems. Real-world datasets commonly show the particularity to have the number of samples of a given class underrepresented compared to other classes. For example, you may have a binary classification problem with 100 instances, out of which 90 instances are labeled with class negative 1, and then the remaining 10 instances are marked with class 1. This imbalance gives rise to the class imbalance problem, which is the problem of learning a concept from a class that has a small number of samples. The class imbalance problem has been encountered in multiple areas such as computer vision, bioinformatics, fraud detection, and medical diagnosis, to name just a few. Imbalanced data substantially compromises the learning process since most of the standard machine learning algorithms expect balanced class distribution or an equal misclassification cost. To get you a real feel of the problem, we begin by importing the thyroid dataset, which contains 52 attributes or features for 3,772 patients. Also, we have target values or labels, either one or negative one, that show whether each patient suffers from a thyroid disorder. In this video, we use the Jupyter Notebook application. However, Python code is Python code, and you can use any other platform such as Google Cloud or Terminal. Here we can see how to import this dataset and find features that we store as a two-dimensional array called X. Remember each row represents a patient and each column corresponds to a feature. We also store the target values, which are plus one or negative one, in a separate 1D array called Y. When you want to train a classifier, the first step is to understand the number of samples in each class. We can do so by using np.unique and passing the 1D array of target values or labels, which is called Y here. After finding count elements, which contains the number of samples in each category, you can create a nice plot using the PyPlot in Matplotly. We notice that the majority class has about 94% of samples, and the minority group contains only about 6% of the total number of samples. After finding the distribution of the target values, let's divide the data into training and test datasets. We do this because the main goal of machine learning is to find the generalization error, which translates to how well a trained model performs on unseen examples. Here we use train test split from model selection to randomly select 70% of the entire data for training purposes and then the remainder, which is 30% for testing. Next, we import logistic regression from scikit-learn, which is a simple linear model for training classifiers. The idea is to find the decision boundary that separates the two classes, which can be done by using dot .fit on the training dataset. After the training step, we use dot .predict method to find predictions for testing data points. A popular technique for measuring the performance of a classifier is known as accuracy, which means that we will compute the number of correctly classified patients 
and divided by the total number of samples in the test dataset. Using this approach, we get about 95% accuracy, and we will be super excited to get such an impressive result using a simple classifier. However, a fundamental question here is, how successful is our classifier in terms of predicting samples that belong to the minority class, which is the positive class or plus one in this example? To further investigate this problem, let's plot the confusion matrix, which is also available in Scikit-Learn. As the name suggests, the confusion matrix has both rows and columns. Each row corresponds to an actual label or class, and each column represents a predicted label or class. If we count the number of samples in each class for the test dataset, we find that we have 1,054 instances with label or target value negative 1. If we add 1042 and 12 in the first row of the confusion matrix, we get exactly 1054. This means that we are doing a great job in terms of predicting negative samples because we correctly found 1042 out of 1054 samples, which is very close to 99%. However, if we closely look at the second row for positive samples, we observe that almost half of the predicted values are incorrect. This is problematic because finding patients with thyroid disorders is the main objective here, but our trained classifier is almost 50% successful, which is not reliable and acceptable at all. To remember how to interpret the confusion matrix, I also have a simple drawing here that shows true negative and true positive on the main diagonal, and then we have incorrect predictions, which are false positive and false negative. The main lesson here is that when we have imbalanced data sets, we should pay a lot of attention to using proper evaluation metrics. Besides the standard accuracy measure that we use, there are two other important metrics known as precision and recall. Precision is defined as the ratio of true positive over true positive plus false positive. And recall is defined as the ratio of true positive to true positive plus false negative. So here we can visually see how to find precision and recall. In order to find precision, we are looking for this vertical line. And you can see that here true positive is 43. And we divide this by 43 plus 12, right? So 12 here is false negative. And this gives us uh, 0.78. And similarly, we can find recall. Recall, if you remember, is defined as true positive, which is 43 again, over 43 plus 35, which gives us 0.55. And we can see that the recall here is really uh, unacceptable because it's very close to 50%. And if you want to interpret this, we can see that what recall means is that out of positive samples, the ones that we know they are actually positive, how many of them are predicted as being positive? And so here means that we had a total of 78 um, actual positive cases. And we are only successful at correctly categorizing 43 of them, which is a really um, unreliable result here. However, when you want to use this in Python, 
they are already built in evaluation metrics to find precision and recall. And in order to do so, we can uh, import precision score and recall score. And then you first pass in actual labels and then predicted labels. And as you see here, we get exactly the same results. I hope this video was useful in order to understand the importance of working with imbalanced data sets. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.